Good morning. Welcome back. Today we are going to attempt to fix the intonation on this 1984 Dan Smith Stratocaster. So this is the two knob Dan Smith. It has the funky tremolo bar that they did not remanufacture. I had to actually find one of these that somebody had that wanted to let go and I paid 160 bucks just for this stupid bar. Um, it didn't come with it when I bought the guitar. And there is absolutely no routing for the tremolo springs. And the funky thing is, is people think there's something wrong with this because it sits on the body, but that's just the way this tremolo works because the springs are underneath the pickups and that's just the way this one is. So it's kind of like hard tailed, but that's, that's the way it's supposed to be. But that's not what we're trying to fix. We're just trying to fix this huge gap here. It's really, really, really close up here and then it, it gets away. So I monkeyed with the truss rod just a minute ago. Uh, went that way with it. I didn't see any kind of change or whatnot. So what we're going to do is we're going to loosen up this and we're going to hit the micro tilt and see if we can get some of this out and uh, play with the truss rod from there. So let's see what I can or can't do to this thing. So I'm sure we're going to have to uh, loosen these screws here. Not sure if we gotta loosen the top ones or not. I did detune the guitar. So there's not much pressure on the strings right now. Let's see if this micro, micro tilt will change anything here. Yeah, that absolutely changed it a whole lot. So let's back it up. A little more. There. Right. That is really close now. Just look at that, just from the micro tilt. We got that big giant gap out from underneath the stream, so now I guess I should tune it to see if the strings are still too close. I think this is going to be a back and forth process until I figure it out. And I don't think too many people have a setup like this. So, let's see. Ooh. Every American does good by eating. So it is close. 
All right, I think we need to monkey with the truss rod. So the last time I did it, I put it in and I went this way. This time I'm gonna put it in there. Go the opposite way a quarter of a turn and see. And I might have to take a little bit out of that micro tilt because I think I got the action too low now. But it sure does beat the giant gap that it had just a minute ago. I really need to get some more more tools and little things that you stick in there and you twist them. And then of the strings and the height. I really do need to get a set of those because I'm always trying to eyeball them. What are you guys doing? Making all the noise. Huh? Well, let's see the tune again. And we got the fret buzz because it's just too low. Hmm. Oh, that sounds great, don't it? Maybe I take this down the lays and ask them what to do with it. It's still in tune. It's just uh, fret buzzing now. Oh, shoot. All right, well, let's detune it again. Take just a smidget out of this. Magnet on the pickup is sucking a string down, so might as well try to retune it again. Thank you. 
All right. I think that's got it there. That's much better down here now. Very nice, even. Let's see if you can see that. But we're still pretty close up here in the first couple frets. So I guess I'm gonna leave it alone for now, but at least it doesn't have mile high action like it did a little bit ago. Minimal fret buzz compared to what it was. I'm gonna have to uh, tote this along with me when I go down to Lay's and ask Dan what to do about this because this whole setup is completely foreign to me. Let's make sure these are tight. All right, well, you didn't learn much on this how-to video. So this is how to start to figure out how to set up a 1984, 1983 Dan Smith with a solid body in the tremolo spring. So uh, we'll do a part two on this to see what we do about the um, truss rod. I don't know if I should monkey with it or not. I mean, it's, it's really, close to where it needs to be, but just not quite there yet. I just don't know if I should keep screwing with the truss rod or not. I'm gonna go back the other way just a smidgen. Still just a little, little bit of buzz down there. All right, well, I guess I'm gonna leave that alone. And I'll have somebody that really knows what they're doing look at it. But I think that that's uh, a whole lot better than it was. because the action was just way too high before I did that. So if you want a funky, weird guitar, look for a 1983 or 1984 Dan Smith era guitar. This was like uh, maybe this part of the CBS era, I think maybe. I bought it because uh, I like the uh, three-tone color burst on it, and I liked how reliced it was. And actually, when I found this guitar, it had so much dirt on it that you couldn't even read the fender on the headstock. And it took me about 10 or 12 hours to completely clean this thing because I had to take every single screw out and clean every spring and every one of these pieces individually because it was so filthy. Uh, but it is all original, uh, even though the tremolo bar didn't come with it. It is an original one because they did not make aftermarket parts for this. So there it is, 1983. Or 84, I'm sorry. They made it in 83 and 84. This is a American made Dan Smith uh, two knob, the solid body, and the tremolo. So, got it a lot closer. I'm going to go down to uh, Lay's this week to trade the 76 for a 2015 Les Paul ES with humbuckers, just like the Les Paul ES you guys see in my previous videos with the P90s. So, 
I'll take this down there and see what they tell me about how to uh, finish this out. But I got it really close for not knowing what I'm doing. That is extremely close to perfect. It has minimal fret buzz at this point. Um, and again, it doesn't have a mile to go down here on the action. So we'll get that looked at or whatever you want to call it. Advice, looked at advice, whatever. And then when I get back, I will tell you what I found out about it. And uh, if he tells me what to do, instead of us doing it right then and there, I will show you what he told me to do and we'll do it and finish it off. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned. There's going to be more videos coming. Uh, we are going down the lays to do the trade from the 1976. Uh, also, we're going to do updates on the Silver Burst, as you guys know, or if you're watching for the first time and you look back at my old videos, I took a 2018 Gibson Les Paul Studio Deluxe silver burst so it has the fretboard like a standard i don't even have a standard here i got custom studios so anyways it's going to be kind of like this so to have the, the block inlays and the fret nibs and bound neck so it's a fancy studio that i took uh, actually i bought it and then i sold it and i took it back and then i stripped it down and we took it to lays I had a third pickup routed into it and then I brought it home and I heated it up and freezed it with uh, air duster and finish checked it and then I decided I didn't like that so we took it back to Lay's. <laughs> Bless me. Oh. Anyways, I uh, took it to Lay's to have uh, vintage clear put on it and uh, they're going to go ahead and finish it off because I'm putting a six-way switch in it and a Veritone, so it's going to be a really crazy guitar. So we're going to get some updates on that while we're down there too. And also there are two guitars that are going to Lay's Loft, and I'm hoping that they're there by the time I get there on Friday. Um, we checked on one, and the shipping on it somehow got held up, and uh, hopefully that, that one will be there when we show up. So... Stay tuned, we have a whole bunch of uh, guitars to look at, uh, talk about, and show you. So, till next time, don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay tuned.